Please be seated. Good morning. We gather together this morning to remember and to celebrate the life of Sandra K. Kahneman, who passed into the presence of her Lord on February 6, 2021, surrounded by her family. Thank you so much for coming today. Your presence is deeply appreciated. This is a time when we have many emotions. We acknowledge our, our sorrow and our pain, but we do not sorrow like those who have no hope. We do have hope. Not in the sense that we hope it won't snow tomorrow, or I have a birthday coming up, I hope Chuck doesn't sing happy birthday to me. <laughs> How many have experienced Chuck's happy birthday songs? If you've missed it, I'm sorry. <laughs> or even the hope that heaven is for real. You see, our hope is not in the sense that we don't know for sure but rather that we do know for sure, we just haven't experienced it and received it yet. Because we know for sure that God's promise of eternal life is true, we can celebrate the fact that Sandy has successfully completed God's plan for, here, for her here on this earth, and now she enjoys the wonders of heaven. That's cause for celebration. We can celebrate the fact that those of us who have received Jesus Christ as our Savior, as Sandy has, will see Sandy once again in much better circumstances. This memorial service might bring a tear to your eye or a smile to your lips, and uh, there might even be laughter, and that's, that's okay, it's not disrespectful. Sandy's life included all of these things and more. All of us are here because we love Sandy. And so, may we turn our thoughts to her life, and throughout the day we encourage you to share memories, your memories of Sandy, which will be also a blessing to others. Because of our faith in, in God's promise, even at a time like this, we're going to sing. Those who have no hope can only sing dirges of despair, but today we sing songs of celebration. May this service honor and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ as Sandy has honored and glorified him throughout her life. And may God bless us all as we celebrate Sandy's life.
thoughts Lord, you've seen them all And you still call me friend Cause the God of the mountain Is the God of the valley And there's not a place No mercy and grace Won't find me again shame into glory you're the only one who cares you turn mourning to dancing you give beauty for ashes you turn shame into glory you're the only one who cares you turn graves into gardens about you but that brought a big smile to my face I was getting my worship on in the back corner um, that was just great and I appreciate Chuck uh, leaving the singing to his daughter that was very good it seems that's going to be a common theme this morning uh, but that's okay uh, my name is Pastor Chad Olszewski I've had the privilege of pastoring Westwood Fellowship in Woodburn for the past six years and uh, it's been an honor and a privilege to have Chuck and Sandy a part of our congregation also Sandy's parents uh, Steve and Carolyn Krukerberg, and not only to have them a part of our congregation, but to be leading and to be serving. Uh, I've been able to serve alongside of Chuck as a fellow elder and also Steve, and uh, it, it is a blessing to be here this morning. I know it's a sad occasion. Uh, in, in some ways, like Pastor Keith mentioned, there will be tears, there will be mourning 
there will be pain, but also uh, this is an opportunity to rejoice because we know the relationship that Sandy had with her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so I would like to uh, begin my time this morning by reading the obituary uh, and stopping along the way just to make a few observations about Sandy's life. And so Sandra Sandy K. Kahneman, 55, passed away on February 6th. 2021, at home with her family by her side. Born in Fort Wayne, she was the daughter of Stephen and Carolyn Krukeberg, who survived. She was a member of Westwood Fellowship Church in Woodburn. She enjoyed camping and staying in bed and breakfasts. She was a fan of Winnie the Pooh, and probably a fan is probably not the right term, an unhealthy obsession. I've been told that she, in the last maybe year or so, tried to downsize her collection. I don't know if that worked very well but definitely a fan of Winnie the Pooh, and she loves spending time with her family and most of all, her grandchildren. She is survived by her husband of 37 years, Chuck Kahneman. And Chuck, uh, what an amazing 37 years. Amen, brother? And one of the things I love about Sandy, and I know you've shared this with me and with others, um, I, I love that, that Sandy loved to joke around. She loved to, to share stories. She loved to hang out with other people and have a good time. Uh, but she never felt like she had to be the center of attention. She never had to have the spotlight on herself. Uh, she never, you know, w was the one who had to be front and center. Uh, she left that to Chuck. And we know Chuck. And he took that ball and ran with it, right? But I love her humility. I love her spirit of servanthood. And in all their years of marriage and life together and ministry together, I know Chuck was usually the one up preaching and sharing God's word and encouraging people and counseling people, uh, but it was your ministry together with your bride. And she was at home uh, paying the bills, uh, making sure the kids were acting somewhat okay. Right, Ben? No? Okay. <laughs> Having the house in order, doing a lot of things behind the scenes so that you could do what God had called you to do preparing the family to move to Michigan and go into the UP, to go to Bowling Green, Ohio, where we have our connection even before we met each other. And so Sandy was right there with you, and it was your life, it was your marriage, it was your ministry together. She was also a loving mother to her children, Ben, married to Jessica Kahneman of Woodburn, and Corinne, married to Jordan Reynolds of Fort Wayne, and uh, if you know Corinne and Ben and, and their spouses, uh, it, it's, it's not hard to see the influence that Sandy had on them uh, in their marriages, uh, the way that they raise kids, and of course their love for Jesus Christ. And then also, Sandy was a loving daughter. Her parents, Stephen and Carolyn Krukeberg of New Haven, and again, I've had the opportunity as the pastor at Westwood Fellowship to know Steve and, and Carolyn, uh, to serve alongside of them. Uh, one thing I love about Steve is, is he's a fellow elder, and he loves to serve people. He loves to encourage people. He loves to visit people. He helps me in my visitation ministry as pastor, and he just loves to visit our people, encourage them, pray for them. And uh, one of the things I love about Steve is that whenever he shares a testimony, he, whenever he shares a praise, uh, he usually says something al along the lines of, hey, it's not about me, right? I don't want the focus to be on me. I want the focus to be on Jesus Christ. And the same thing with Carolyn, Sandy's mother, uh, servant-minded, loving, compassionate, empathetic, uh, would, would go out of her way to serve anybody. So it's, it's easy to see uh, the influence that that uh, Steve and, and Carolyn had on their daughter. Also, she was a loving sister to Keith, married to Ellen Krukeberg of uh, Walcottville. And I know, uh, I know Keith, I, I've been kind of talking up your sister quite a bit uh, this morning. Uh, I'm sure you have some stories of, of when maybe she wasn't so pleasant back in the day, right? I know what it's like as an older brother and what my relationship was like with my younger siblings. Uh, but I'll leave that to Keith to share those stories. Also, sister-in-law Carol Elser of Leo, and I've had the privilege of getting to know Carol a little bit over the last few years and talking with her. Also, grandchildren Charlie, Ezekiel, and James Kahneman, 
and Isaac and Eli Reynolds, and we know those boys. You see them running around, lots of energy, and it's amazing that Sandy had the energy and the enthusiasm to keep up with those boys. Also, niece is Emily, married to Byron Hefty, Allie Krukeberg, and Kelly, married to Corey Rhodes, and then Sandy was preceded in death by her infant daughter, Nicole Kahneman. And so I would like to share just a brief passage at this time from the Gospel of John. Uh, as I was reflecting on this passage last night, it reminded me of Sandy, uh, how she sought to imitate her Lord and Savior. Uh, this is a great demonstration of Jesus in his final moments, even in his pain, even in his agony and suffering, he was looking out for others. And so this is a reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 19, and it says this, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold, this is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. And so as Jesus is hanging on the cross, as he is being crucified, in all of his pain, in all of his suffering, what is he focused on? He is focused on the needs of others. And in her final moments, in her final days, in her final weeks, even as cancer was taking over her body, Sandy was focused on others, loving others, encouraging others, making sure that your needs were met, Chuck, that she had time with her kids and her grandkids and her other extended family members. And I wanted to read a, a Facebook post that Sandy wrote just a few weeks before her passing. And again, this summarizes her life. It summarizes her desire to love others and to walk in the power and the strength and the grace of her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so this was, I believe, written on January 8th after finding out about the diagnosis of the return of the cancer and the aggressive nature of the cancer, this is what she wrote. Well, this is certainly not the path that we would have chosen. It is the path that God will see us through, just as he has with many other trials in our life. He is a mighty, mighty God. And he could choose to heal me outright, or he could allow the drug to stop the progression and give me another year or two to live. And he could choose to give me the ultimate healing in his presence in heaven. And then she wrote this, hug your family, spend time with your family. Not one of us knows how long we will be on this earth. Please, if you do not have the assurance of eternal life in heaven after your time on earth is done, then please seek and find out how easy it is. In John 14, 6, she quoted Jesus, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so that's what Sandy's life was all about, honoring and glorifying her Lord and Savior, living out her faith in real and practical ways every day. And I know Pastor Keith will share about this more in just a couple of minutes. Chuck will share about this here in a few minutes. This is what Sandy was all about. And her prayer was that we would reflect on our lives this morning. And if you have not, that you would make a decision for Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Again, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for this morning. And again, through the tears and through the, the difficulties and through the, the frustration or maybe even emotions of anger that she was taken too soon, God, that we would lean into you, that we would draw our strength from you, Again, your word says, in this life, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Those are the words of our Lord and Savior. We thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for us. We thank you for the testimony of your servant, Sandy. We continue to pray that this time would be glorifying to you and would be a great time to honor her. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen.
we're going to have a time of worship. If you'd like to stand with us and join in song, we'd appreciate it.
Chuck, you married a good woman. As, as Pastor Chad said, uh, she wasn't somebody that was loud and boisterous. She didn't have to be the center of attention, but she always supported you and she helped you as much as she could. I remember Sandy's uh, sense of humor. It wasn't always out front. <laughs> Perhaps I shouldn't call it a wicked sense of humor, <laughs> but <laughs> sometimes it just kind of snuck up on you and uh, it seemed to come out of nowhere and she had some zingers. But you and Sandy were, a, you, you, you were a pair, a team. And I think you completed each other in many, many ways. To show the character of Sandy Kahneman with Chuck's permission, I would like to share some of the details of Sandy's last year here on earth. About a year ago, Sandy was diagnosed with an aggressive form of cancer. That is something that no one wants to hear. Chuck and Sandy fought the disease with chemotherapy and surgery. The tumor was removed and uh, 10 of the lymph, lymph nodes taken were clean and, and they thought the prognosis was pretty good. They traveled to Indy every three weeks for six months of immune therapy and thought that she was doing pretty well. But then, just after Christmas, Sandy began to have a cough. And uh, it was such that they took her in to be tested for COVID. Her test came back negative, but the cough persisted she developed a, a rash and was scheduled for a CT scan and MRI. And the test came back and showed that the cancer had spread to her liver, lungs, and lymph nodes. In January, Chuck and Sandy were told that she had about six months to live. A week later, Chuck took leave of, a leave of absence from the chaplaincy to spend more time with Sandy and to oversee her care. He is so thankful for such a supportive employer and for the time that he was able to spend with Sandy. Sandy's breathing continued to deteriorate and it became difficult to eat and drink. She was admitted to the hospital on Saturday, January 30th. They were now told that Sandy would likely only have about two weeks to live. On the Wednesday before she passed, Sandy came home. Chuck took care of her the first night and then realized that he needed help. And God brought hospice and family members, very special family members, in to help with Sandy's care. Chuck is immensely grateful to those who gently cared for Sandy. On Thursday, Sandy enjoyed visits from her children and grandchildren. The grandchildren made cards for Sandy, sharing their favorite thoughts of Grandma. On Friday, Ben and Corinne and Sandy's family came to visit, and her breathing continued to deteriorate. On Saturday, Chuck turned on some Christian music, which seemed to help Sandy to relax. Her mom and dad and Ben and Corinne came in in the afternoon. They prayed with Sandy and told her it was okay to go. Chuck had some time to be alone with her uh, prior to her passing on Saturday about 5.50 p.m. Throughout the whole ordeal, <clears throat> Sandy never complained. Her personality didn't change. She didn't get angry and mean. She didn't get angry at God. Hardship and pain test a person's metal, shows what a person is made of. 
Sandy passed that test with flying colors. Sandy was a good person. She was a good employee. She was a good friend. She's a good mom. She's a good wife. Some even probably would say that Sandy must have been a saint to put up with Chuck for 37 years. But as good as she was, the only thing that mattered on the moment she died was her relationship with Jesus Christ. The fact that she was a good person, friend, mother, and wife did not gain her entrance into heaven. It was only her faith in Jesus Christ. You see, even though she was such a good person, Sandy, like all of us, have sinned against God. The Bible in Romans tells us that we all have sinned, and not one of us deserves to go to heaven. We're all in that same boat. The Bible also tells us that the consequences of our sin is spiritual death, to be eternally separated from God in the torment of hell. Oh my goodness, the pastor said hell. You might even say, do you really believe in a literal hell? Well, you know, actually, whether or not I believe in a literal hell does not determine whether or not it exists. What matters is what God says about it. And the Bible clearly speaks of the reality of hell. <clears throat> when you think about it, why would God send Jesus to earth to allow him to suffer if he did, if there was no hell to save us? from would have been kind of foolish wouldn't make sense Jesus came as our savior in fact the name Jesus Christ is all about <coughs> the Messiah sent from God to save people from their sins to save them from the consequences of our sins When Jesus died on the cross, he paid the penalty for our sins so that we don't have to. God then offers the free gift of forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life to all who are willing to accept it by faith. God doesn't force this incredible gift upon us, but offers it to us freely. So if God did all of this to save us from our sins and sin's consequences... Don't you think that God might be a little bit ticked? Very angry if we refuse to accept this gift of salvation that comes through Jesus' death on the cross. You see, when we refuse to accept that, we disrespect what Jesus did. We disrespect the pain he suffered. We disrespect what it cost God. Wouldn't it be really foolish to re refuse God's gift of salvation and think that we could live a good enough life to earn our way into salvation? If we could live a good enough life to earn our way into salvation, why would God send his son to save us if we could do it ourselves? But we cannot earn our way into heaven. None of us deserve to enter heaven it is only by God's grace that we are saved through faith. We cannot save ourselves. It is only received as a gift from God. So that none of us can say, I've earned it. You know, I'm such a good person, I've earned it. Sandy received that gift. That gift of salvation, forgiveness, and eternal life and because of that now experiences the wonders of heaven. I pray that someday you will join her to share the eternal joy of the presence of God.
today. My family and I, my family and I would like to thank you all for your kind words, your heartfelt prayers, and your loving touches over the past couple months as we watch Sandy pass to the arms of her Savior. She experienced so much pain in such a graceful and gentle demeanor. I've watched so many people pass to their heavenly home over the close to 30 years serving as a firefighter and 27 years of ministry. Out of all those times, I have never watched someone take their last breath here and first heavenly breath to do it with as much grace and as much peace. Sandy's life was always about someone else. She supported her husband, <laughs> me. She did everything to make her family succeed and served her community as a sister and a friend. Sandy would have wanted me to make sure you knew the source of that peace. And she told me that if I didn't, she'd come back and haunt me. To make all the pain she bore have purpose. It would give the family comfort knowing that one of two things would be accomplished. First, that at least one person would reflect over their life and their commitment to Christ and truly choose to evaluate it. If you haven't given your all, then... What are you waiting for? When we first found out Sandy had cancer, we fought the fight for about a year thinking we had it beat. When we found out it was back, we were given six months. I thought that was too short a time. We then hit with the thought of two weeks and then only found out we had five days. So heaven's gate opened and she gently walked in. You always think that you have time. I can make that decision another day. But not one of us is promised tomorrow. But if you choose Jesus as your Savior, you have the promise of eternity. The other thing, if you haven't made the choice to accept Jesus as your personal Savior, then again, what are you waiting for? Today, right now, can be your day and your time. It is just a conversation you have with your Creator a poem is behind me. And this is just one of many ways to express the parts and portions of a sinner's prayer. So many people are here today that could help you know the eternal home. And all of us would love the chance to make sure you can have the peace that truly passes all understanding. If you evaluated your life and you desire to make a recommitment to your God as he, if you do me a favor, bow your heads and close your eyes. That way nobody knows except me looking at you. And of course the wife who's looking down at you too. But if you've evaluated your life and you desire to make a recommitment to the God that you put your hands in, and you haven't given him all, but now you want to give him everything. Make this pain that she went through make sense to me, will you? As heads are bowed and eyes are closed, would you raise your hand and recommit your life to what Jesus called you to?
Thank you so much. Keep your heads bowed, your eyes closed. If this is the first time you've ever heard a clear presentation of the gospel, stick around, I'll let you have my seven-year-old grandson. He'll explain it to you. (laughs) But really, if you haven't, and today it finally makes sense, and you want to take the time to, again, ensure your eternity, The prayer behind me is just a form of a sinner's prayer. But again, it's just a conversation that you have with the one that made you. And if today's the day that you want to make that conversation known, then do me a favor. Again, as heads are bowed and eyes are closed, would you raise your hand again so that this pain makes sense to me? Thank you so much. I got nothing else to say. I'm going to sit down. (laughs) That was cool. Guys, thank you again. Uh, You don't really know how much it means to us, our family, and to that woman that supported me all these years. To see those hands raised and to know that this makes sense is totally awesome. Thank you again. Thank you, Chuck. As Chuck was sharing those words, um, one of the things that came to my mind is is sometimes I know it's a bit odd or strange or or that may be the perception of of how you can sing with joy and how you can laugh and joke around during a time like this. And it's because of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Christ. Pastor Keith referenced this verse during his opening remarks. Paul talks about in 1 Thessalonians that we do not grieve as those who have no hope. Yes, it's not fun dealing with cancer or dealing with COVID or dealing with whatever struggles and difficulties come our way. And sometimes we feel like the world is crushing down on us. But in the midst of that, the Bible assures us that there is hope, there is truth, there is victory. This world and all of its sin and all of its frailties, that's not our ultimate destination. If we've learned anything over the past year with COVID, it's that we're not in control. We like to think we're in control. We like to think our politicians are in control that science has all the answers, technology has all the answers, and we're just one medical breakthrough away from living in this utopian society. The Bible reminds us that's not true. It's never been true, it won't be true now, it will never be true until the return of Jesus Christ. He is our anchor, he is our hope, and as Chuck has shared this morning, Pastor Keith has shared, as I have shared, as you've heard the songs, we pray that if you have not made that decision, that today would be the the day that you make that decision to follow Jesus Christ. Repent of your sin, to acknowledge that you fall short of God's glory and perfection, and that the only way for true hope and true strength and true joy is through a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so with my closing benediction, I would just like to read these short words from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, starting in verse number 16. These are the words of Paul, again, to remind us of the power and the grace of Jesus Christ and the hope that we have through him. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace, Comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. Amen. Please pray with me. Again, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this time to remember Sandy, to remember a life well lived, 
And as Pastor Keith mentioned, yes, she was a good person in so many ways. She was a good wife, a good daughter, good sister, good mother, good grandmother, good friend. But that's not what earned her eternal life. It is through your grace, God, through your mercy. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for Jesus Christ dying for our sins, taking the penalty that we deserved, putting it on himself, and being raised from the dead, proving his victory over sin and death. That is our hope. That is our strength. That is what helps us make sense of this world impacted by sin. We thank you, Jesus, for your victory. For those of us who know you personally, we look forward to seeing Sandy again one day, rejoicing with her. And again, with her, enjoying your eternal presence. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Since we will not be going to the cemetery today, uh, we'll just ask that you stay just to, for a brief committal service here. After the committal, a lunch will be served in the gymnasium for family and close friends. Once again, thank you so much for coming. <clears throat> in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and on the sixth day, God created man. When God created man, he formed a human body out of the dust of the earth. It seems like a pretty humble beginning, but God never intended our, our bodies to be permanent, but rather temporary. But then God breathed into that body he had formed, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And so at a committal service, we say the words, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we commit the body back to the earth from whence it came. But the eternal soul, the spirit, we commit to God for eternity. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Apostle, the, the Apostle Paul writes, Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Today we declare victory. We declare victory for Sandy because she is now enjoying the, the, the wonders of heaven. We can't even begin to imagine what that's like. It's so good our human minds can't comprehend it. She's doing great. We, we, have a, we have a hurt here, but she's doing great. Because Jesus Christ rose from the dead, we also will rise. His resurrection is the promise that we also will be raised to eternal life. Yes, we will rise again.
someday God will call our name. And for those who have faith in Jesus Christ, we'll rise to eternal glory. The Apostle Paul ends the chapter of 1 Corinthians 15 with these words. Therefore, my dear brothers, take that to be us. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And I'm here to tell you this morning that Sandy's labor in the Lord is not in vain. And it hasn't ended either. You see, she invested in each one of us. She touched our lives. And in turn, she has made a difference in us as we continue here on earth. And in turn, we will invest in other people's lives. And Sandy Kahneman's influence will live on for generations. For generations. This is a time where we often think of, and it's a time that we say goodbye to our loved ones. This afternoon, instead of saying goodbye, I prefer to say, see you later, Sandy. See you later, because it won't be all that long until we will be reunited again. And it will be in a celestial place, in the presence of our Lord. See you later, Sandy. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us so much that you are willing to send Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, to this earth to save us because we all need a Savior. Thank you for that tremendous sacrifice that was made that we might experience forgiveness salvation and eternal life. We thank you for Sandy. Thank you for giving us a gift. The gift of a person named Sandy to touch our lives. And Lord, we pray that we might carefully examine our own hearts and our own lives. That we might live in a manner that honors you. We ask now that you might be our comfort. We pray that you might grant wisdom. We pray that as we live our lives, that we too might hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. Bless us, we ask in Jesus' name, amen.